Hi children, this is Ravi Chitakari, PGT Botany, TS Model School, Kalwala, Kesamutra. So in the first year, wing wall, so it is in a first unit, this consists of four chapters. So the first chapter is in a living wall, living wall. So in this session, uh, I'm going to explain about the living wall. So what are the differences in between the living object and non-living object and as well as binomial nomenclature, classification, hierarchy of the classification and dif different keys which are used for the classification. Okay, so these are the topics we discussed in this session. Okay, listen carefully. So go for the first slide. So here, what is living? So the object having characteristics of cellular organization growth, reproduction, ability to sense environment and give metabolisms, etc. Okay, so these are factors which are shown by the any object, so that would be considered as an, a living object, living object. So because of already we studied in our previous classes, so the cells are basic unit of life. Okay, the cell is in a structural and functional unit of life. Okay, in the unicellular organisms and multicellular organisms, so the cellular organization, okay, to form the tissues and different organs and that have to form the different kinds of activities. And yet the living thing that shows the growth as well as able to replicate their progeny and also this sense to the different environmental situations. So for example, so yet the organisms or sensitive to their environment. So which means uh, if the cold condition is there, so automatically we wear the sweater. So what it means indicate, so here you are responding to the external stimulus. Okay, whatever the stimuli which is present in the environment, okay, that is received by our sense organs and according to that stimulus given a response. Okay, that nothing but it is an ability to, to sense the environment. And also we give the response to that particular physical stimulus and also our body involved in the different kinds of metabolic activities okay yeah the metabolism nothing but it is an a sum of biological or biochemical reactions that takes place in our body that is known as metabolism okay so these are the few characteristics factors for the living object okay so the characteristics of the living organism is first is growth second one is reproduction and third one is metabolism and fourth one is cellular organization and fifth one is consciousness to the environment and interactions among the organism okay so these are the different characteristics features of living object living object okay coming to the first one if the all organisms grow already you know about based on the cell member the organisms are mainly divided into the two type one is a unicellular organism and second one is a multicellular organism okay so you have the unicellular organisms that have only the single cell and multicellular organisms that have the many number of the cells and those cells are aggregated to form any tissues and those tissues are formed as organs and those organs are involved in the different kinds of metabolic activities so here Increase in mass or number of cells is the growth. Okay, yes. we discussed about the plants. The plants grows throughout the life. So if you take in a seed, sown that seed to the soil after a few days, so you observe the seedling. So it becomes sapling. Then, so it grows as in a plant. So the plant grows throughout its life. So coming to the animals, Animals grow up to the certain age. Animal grows up to the certain age. So here the growth in between the living and non-living. So because of non-living objects are also grow. But the growth of the living or non-living organism growth so is completely different. Okay, coming to the non-living objects, so they can also grow by externally. So for example, so if you have taken any material, so it has a particular length. 
Okay, the same material you can add it or accumulate it on its surface. What will be happen? So the material in these increased. So for example, the mountains or increase. So the snow mountains are increased day by day because of so the mountain has in a particular altitude. Okay, so by the adding of additional substances like ice or the the mountains are grow day by day, day by day. Okay, so yeah, living objects are also grow, but the living objects grow inside growth is mainly present. So which means so the cells present in the body of the plants that is divided and divided and divided. So the growth is comes from inside of the living object. Okay, so that's why the growth can be considered as in a defining property of the living being. So because so the living thing. And as well as non-living objects can also grow. This shows the growth. So that's why it is not a considering a defining property of the living beings. Okay. So there are certain examples which mosses decrease during the growth, germinating of the predator tuber. Okay. So for example, so if the predator plant is grow, automatically it produce the many number of the tubers inside the soil. So after that some time, after that one year, so what will be happen? So whatever the tubers, which are the tubers that store the food material, so this food material is used. So first of all, the food material is stored in the potato. The potato becomes a tuberous structure. So after that, whatever the food material that stored in the potato is used for the growth and development of the plant. Automatically, the potato tuber size is or mass is decreased during the growth and development of the potato plants. One. Producing flowers and seeds. Okay, so that's why here the growth is not in a defining property of the living beings. Okay, growth is not in a defining property of the living beings. Okay, coming to the next slide. Uh, yeah, the growth, which means increase the mass and also number. So mainly the growth is responsible for the cell divisions in the organisms. The plants divisions occur continuously and are animals up to the certain age. I already told you. So division is also enabled to replace the loss of cells. So whatever the plants lose their cells, so that is mainly replaced by the cells with the help of cell division okay so in the unicellular the division to increase in number growth increase in body mass non living growth with accumulation of the material on the surface examples mountains boulders sand mounds and etc etc yeah the growth can be defining property of the living organisms i already told you so because of both living and non living objects can shows the growth okay but the growth is different in living and non living so because of in the living object the growth is internal in the non living object the growth is an external remind it okay so now coming to the second property of that living organism that is a reproduction okay so the characteristics of the living being to produce the progeny is possessing the futures of their own child so every organism involves in the reproduction to produce their child or to produce their Progeny. Okay, so yeah, the reproduction is different type. Already you studied in your tenth standard that is mainly sexual reproduction and asexual type of reproduction. So the fungal cells that produce the spores for asexual reproduction. Okay, the organism via planarians reproduce by the regeneration. So in which a fragment of the body forms the whole organism. So already we discussed in our tenth standard. So like a regeneration by the planarian. So the organism planarian cut into the small pieces. So have the head and tail piece that produce the whole body, our whole body with nothing but it is called as an a regeneration. If the fungi, filamentous alga, proteinema of the mass are also reproduced by the fragmentation also. So which means so a filamentous alga, algae that cut into the small pieces. Each piece have a capability to produce the whole filament of that alga. So for example, fungi. You observe the fungi in your daily life. So when you offer the coconut, the coconut were placed in your kitchen or in your home. After few days, what will you observe? 
So you observe many black and white and green color spots on the surface of the endosperm of the coconut. Okay, so that the thing about the fungi grown on the coconut. Okay, if you take in a little bit of that uh, fungal spore inoculum and place it in any other fresh coconut, so automatically it is also appeared. That the thing about so the fungi reproduce by the fragmentation. If the fragmentation means the filamentous alga or protein of the mass or fungal mycelia cut into a small pieces. So each piece is developed as a new progeny that is called as fragmentation. Okay, so in unicellular organisms are also shows the growth and reproduction was synonymous. Okay, certain organisms do not reproduce via mule, worker bees, infertile human couple. Okay, so the ends the production can be considered as a defining property of the living organism. So here the organisms are reproduced in a general way, but few of the organisms they are not reproducing. So for example, mule, worker bee. So in the different kinds of honey bees, the queen bee, worker bee, and male bees. So the worker bees are sterile in condition. So which means they are not able to perform the reproduction, are not produce the progeny. So as well as the infertile human couple is also not reproduce the child. So that's why the reproduction is also can be considered as a defining property of the living thing. Okay, so just you see the figures here. So these are the unicellular organisms. So these organisms involve in the binary fusion to produce the two cells and it is in a hydra. So it produces the bird like structure. So when it is detached, automatically it will grow as a new new progeny that nothing but it is called as a budding. Okay, so the sweet potato. So they have a facilitated roots. So the roots are separated and placed into another place automatically it will give a new plant okay so similarly the human being uh, for the mother so that produce the sperm cells and egg cells and when it is known the fertilization to produce the baby okay the baby is to in condition so whatever the organisms which involves in the reproduction but the non-living organisms uh, do not involve in the reproduction okay for example any non-living object. So if we take a stone or if we take a bench or chair, okay, so this is not produce its progeny. That's why the non-living objects are not involved in the reproduction. Okay, coming to the third activity, the metabolism. So yeah, the metabolism is a very, very important characteristic property of the living organism because of all the organisms are made up of the chemicals. Either the chemical may be the small chemical or big chemical. So nothing but it is in a macromolecules or micromolecules. Okay, these chemicals are biomolecules which are mainly made and changed to other molecules. For example, carbohydrates, proteins, vitamins, fats, and etc. etc. Okay, so the, all these molecules are formed with the help of metabolic reactions only. Okay, so the sum of total all biochemical reaction that takes place in a body is metabolism. Okay, remind it the sum total of all biochemical reaction that takes place in a body or living organism is known as metabolism. Okay, so here the non living organisms are not involved in the metabolic activities. So because of it is not change in a chemical biochemical form so physically it is changed but chemically it is not changed okay so with the metabolic reaction demonstrated outside of the body in the cell free system test tube or in vitro neither the living or nor non-living okay so if the metabolism is in a defining feature of the living thing and cellular organization of the body is in a defining feature of the life form okay so because of Due to the metabolism only, the cells are involved in the different kinds of metabolic activities and they involve in the metabolisms like cell and photosynthesis, respiration and excretion, coordination, transportation and etc. etc. Okay, so here the given examples for the metabolic metabolism is uh, photosynthesis and aerobic respiration. So already you observe the equation for the photosynthesis in your SSS standard the 6CO2 plus 6H2O 
gives rise to C6 H2O6 and 6O2 plus 6 H2. So which means so you have very complex organic molecules and inorganic molecules uh, like CO2 plus H2O in the presence of chlorophyll and sunlight they formed as in a complex carbohydrate that nothing but it is in a C6H2O6 so which means so in the metabolism mainly divided into the two types one is anabolism and second one is in a catabolism okay, the anabolism means the production of complex molecule from the simpler molecules production of complex molecules from the simpler molecules so by using energy by using energy that's why the photosynthesis is an endogenic pathway endogenic pathway okay so this is an example for anabolism coming to the catabolism so here the c6h12o6 in the presence of oxygen so it releases carbon dioxide and water along with the carbon dioxide and water it also releases the energy okay so here what will be happen the complex organic molecule in the presence of oxygen it undergo breakdown and release the simpler molecules like carbon dioxide and water and also release the energy so here the energy producing reactions so nothing but they are called as exogenic pathways or exogenic reactions okay here yeah, the respiration is in the best examples for the catabolism okay the metabolism several chemical reactions occur in a living organism is known as metabolism so in these reactions some are anabolic and some are catabolic anabolic means nothing but they are construct the complex molecules catabolic reactions they are destruct the complex molecules in anabolism example photosynthesis catabolism example respiration okay so all the reaction together are called metabolic reactions and this process is called as metabolism so it is in a defining property of the living organism so because of without metabolic activity no organism is living in condition living in condition okay now coming to the one more property of the living thing that is in a consciousness to the surroundings okay so actually the living organism show sense their surroundings or environmental stimulus either the stimulus is in a physical or chemical or biological so if the organism sense through the sense organ so the plants are also sense their surroundings like surrounding factors like a light water temperature organisms and pollutants so for example the photo period influence on the reproduction it's regional breeders like plants and animals so whenever you see the mangoes so when it is a mango flowering when it is appear so it is appeared in the month of january february and the mangoes always formed on the plants in summer season only so because of the photo period because of light is also influenced the plant growth and development okay so human being is also aware of himself that is a self consciousness okay consciousness is also defining property of the living organism so i think everybody knows about uh, tasmina plant you studied uh, movement in plants in your 10th standard that is trophic movement and uh, nastic movement okay the plant growth is uh, either they may be determined or not determined by the any external stimulus so it is called as nastic movement so that's shown by mimosa pudica touch me not plant so if you touch the plant what will be happened the leaves are closed leaves are closed here okay so whatever the hot object when you touch it automatically you remove the hand from that hot object so because of your conscious towards the external stimulus okay external stimulus okay so coming to the diversity of the living world you have the biodiversity which means the term used to refer the number of varieties of the plants so on the earth okay here we studied about the plant botany so that's why there are many number of the plant varieties are there for your surroundings so you observe your surroundings the plants are divided into the small herbs shrubs trees 
and the trees and shrubs and herbs, there are a lot of varieties are there. For example, neem, tamarind, prosophies, and etc. etc. Okay, the number of species known to 1.7 to the 1.8 million. Okay, so here whenever so we observe the different kind of the plant, but the every plant has in a specific name, specific name to recognize that particular plant. So here we call neem plant as an azadiracta indica, mango plant as a mongifera indica. But we should not call the neem plant as a name, mongifera indica and mango plant as an azadiracta indica. So because of so every plant that have a specific name. Okay, so the need for classification is living organisms are classified with the different categories. That's why they could be named and remembered and studied and understand very easily. So that's why so we are classifying the different number of species that present on the earth. So that are divided into the various categories. So for example, a group of organisms that have a, that shows the locomotion. So it may be the plant animals and they do not show the locomotion. It may be the plant. Okay, based on the characters that shown by the organisms only, we classified into the different categories. Okay, you need to standardize the naming of organism. So the organism named the same in all over the world. That is called as nomenclature. So for example, so uh, as a uh, hibiscus rosa sinensis. So which is in a scientific name of uh, China rose. So Telugu, which is called as Mandara. So in Telangana region, the China rose is called as a Mandara. So when we go to that other places, so the China rose is also called as a Dasavi. Okay. So because of the plant that have any different local names, different local names. So, so it is uh, giving little bit confusion to identify the organisms and identify the plant. So that's why the nomenclature given as standard naming of organisms okay in all over the world all over the world okay so nomenclature means scientific name to the all known organism all known organism so if you find out any new organism so you also give a name to that organisms in a scientific manner okay so here there are two principles and criteria criteria are produced by the Institute okay that is an ICBN and ICZN okay so the ICBN so it is a very important two mass question ICBN stands for International Code for Botanical Nomenclature and ICZN codes for International Code for Geological Nomenclature okay so these are two principles and criteria that given by the ICBN and ICZN only Okay, I see ZN, so the plants and animals name were given by the scientist. Okay, according to the principles that given through that ICBN only, the plants name should be given here. Okay, so that's why the ICBN is stands for International Code for Botanical Nomenclature. Okay, so here it is a very, very important four marks question, binomial nomenclature. Okay, the binomial nomenclature first introduced by Gaspard Bahin. So, later it is developed by the Carolus van Linnaeus. Okay, he published the book. The book name is in a Systema Naturae. Systema Naturae. So, the scientific name of given to the organism using two words. That's why it is called as binomial nomenclature. So the binomial nomenclature, which means nomenclature means to give the plant or to give name to the organism. Binomial means bi means two. Here yeah, the two words, a name that contain two words, a scientific name that contain two words, which is called as binomial nomenclature. Don't confuse. So the word of the plant the name of the plant or animal that contain two words okay so especially in our plant studies the binomial nomenclature is in a widely accepted one widely accepted one so any plant name that have in a two words that's why the scientific naming of an organism using two words is known as 
binomial nomenclature so which was first introduced by the colorless linnaeus colorless linnaeus okay so here in the binomial nomenclature so every plant that has a two words so the one word that represents the genus and the second was so which is also represents the species okay so which is also called as generic name and specific epithet okay generic name and specific epithet okay each name that has two component the first component is genus and second component is species okay here the rules for the nomenclature actually the biological names or scientific names are generally in latin word and they are also derived different kinds of latin words and they are written in italics the written in italics so the first words always represents the genus and second word that denote the species okay so actually the genus is always to be noun and the species is always to be the adjective okay the genus that represents the noun of that particular plant and the species species that reflect the adjective of that plant okay so if the both words of the biological name should be underlined separately when it is in handwriting so when we write the scientific name of any plant so for example azadi recta indica so it is a scientific name of the name plant so when we write azadi recta indica with handwriting so we should be underlined genus and species separately okay but when we printed it so it will print in italics let us only it will print in italics only okay so when you write or when you print the scientific name of any plant the genus is always starts with the capital letter and the species is always starts with the small letter okay the genus is always starts with the capital letter and the species is always starts with the small letter so if the mango scientific name is in a mangifera indica okay here the mangifera is in a genus name indica is in a species name okay here the name that given to the plant mangifera so which represents the genus because of it is a name of the plant and indica so it is in a species it represents the species so which means so it is an adjective of the plant because of that mango plants are mainly distributed in india that's why it is called as indica mangifera indica okay so here especially in the plant nomenclature so the tato names were not used okay the tato names means the genus and species name should be same so in zoological nomenclature the tato names were accepted so because of uh, the cobra scientific name is in a naza naza so both genus and species name is same so in the zoological nomenclature but so in the botanical nomenclature the tato names were not accepted so which means so the pyrus py okay malus malus it is a scientific name of apple okay but it should be shifted to the pyrus malus so because of the malus malus that both generic kind of specific epithet is same so that's why it is not acceptable by the icbn or icbn rules so that's why the name is given pyrus malus to the apple because of species and genus should be separate or different okay so coming to the taxonomy the process of classification based on the characteristics of the living organism is known as taxonomy here the taxis and nomos okay nomos means rules taxis means arrangement okay arrangement of the plants according to the rules that given by the icbn so is known as taxonomy okay here the classes of classification based on the characteristics of the living organism so here we take the characteristics of the plants according to their characters we can group the plants into the different places but nothing but it is called as a classification okay the plant characters may be the external internal cell structure and have development and mechanical information based on the modern taxonomy okay so the human being is interested to know different organism diversity along with their relationship with others is known as 
systematic so yeah plan systematic is also very important to mass question so it deals with the cal classification of organism based on their diversity and relationship among them okay is known as systematic okay coming to the taxonomical hierarchy so the arrangement of the various taxon of the classification is known as hierarchy of the taxonomy okay so there are different levels or different taxons or involved in the form framing of hierarchy okay so the next taxonomical study of all organisms will lead to the development of categories such as kingdom division class order family genus and species if the species is in a basic unit of classification species is in a basic unit of classification okay so any organism that shows the fundamental similarities okay the organism that shows the fundamental similarities that known as species okay it is in a basic unit of organism so we have the aggregator of some species that form the genus later some genus are aggregated to form the family families of form the order orders of form the class a uh, class of form the phylum for the animals and division for plants and divisions of form the kingdom okay so just you see the a group of individual organi organism that having in a fundamental similarities so that shows the species okay so which means so they are involved in the reproduction among themselves okay so here the group of individual organism that shows fundamental similarities known as species okay you have the distinct morphological difference is there between the two closely related species so for example panthera tigris and panthera leo one is a name. tiger scientific name and second one is a name. lion scientific name as well as in plants the solanum tuberosum and solanum nigrum okay first one is a potato and second one is a name. so the second pick okay that is a solanum nigrum so telugu which is called as kamanchi or buddha gasha okay so here the panthera solanum they are generic names and next to the higher level of taxons here the genus may have more than one specific epithet represents the different organism so here the genus consists of more than one species so here the species are tuberosum nigrum melanzina suretens okay so these are the different species under the genus are solana so similarly the tigris leo so these are the different species that under the genus of panthera panthera so coming to the genus so genera aggregates the closely related species so group of related species with more characters in common than the species of other genera so here the panthera leo and panthera pardus leopard and panthera tigris okay animal which comes under the genus of panthera share several common features of different from the genus felis okay so here the panthera the different from the felis so similarly so in the potato brinjal solanum tuberosum and solanum melanzina so these are the plant species that belongs to the solanum genus so here the genus that consists the different characters along with the other genus of the same family so for example capsicum is also belong to the solanaceae but the solanum and also capsicum okay and that nothing but it is in a capsicum annum capsicum fructescens so it is also another genus okay so a family consists of different kinds of different kinds of genuses so here the family which means it has in a group of related genera with the less number of similarities okay so whenever you go through the hierarchy level in the classification from the species to the genus and genus to the family family to the order automatically the similar characters will be less in number similar character will be less in number so the family characterized on the basis of vegetative and reproductive features so for example the solanaceae includes the genera of solanum petunia datura and etc etc and coming to the orders so assemblies of families which exhibit the few similar character that are very less in number so which represents the order okay at the convolvulinaceae solanaceae in the order of polymonials poly monials so coming to the class so it includes the all related orders having a few similar characters okay the mammalia includes the order of primata monkey gorilla gibbon and carnivora so like at dicotyledonae that includes the polymonials sapindales and etc etc okay so different orders that constitute the class because of orders 
when we compared it so they have in a very similar character few similar characters that were kept in the one class and they were kept in the another class the class dicotyledonous so which means two cotyledons are present the class monocotyledon which means only the single cotyledon is present okay so these classes that includes the division of the plant because of they are also having very few similar characters okay so here the division angiosperm that includes the class of dicotyledon and monocotyledon so one more division is also present so that is a gymnosperm gymnosperm so one more divisions are also like palophyta bryophyta pteridophyta angiosperms gymnosperms okay these are the different divisions that are present in the kingdom of plants okay so it is in the highest category of the taxonomy that is animals are under the animalia kingdom the plants are under the plant kingdom so we will discuss very deeply on the plant kingdom that present in our fourth chapter fourth chapter so this you see or observe the table so they give in a common name biological name genus family order class and phylum or division okay so here the host like musca domestica and genus is in a musca and species is in a domestica okay the family is in a musidae and order is in a diptera and class is in a insecta and phylum is in a orthopoda so coming to the mango mongifera is in a genus indica is in a species family is in anacordiaceae order is in a sapindales class is in a dicotyledon and division is in a angiosperm okay the classification is based on the characters only so that characters more similar to the less similar so the more similar in species and very less similar in division so because of whenever the hierarchy level of the classification is increased from the kingdom so the similar characters are decreased or similar characters are very less in number less in number okay now coming to the one more important topic that is in a taxonomic aids okay so here yeah, the taxonomic aids aids are nothing but tools so which are used for the classification okay so they are different bio researchers to identify the biodiversity of the nature okay so here yeah, we studied about the plant classification plant classification okay here yeah, the studies require the correct classification and identification and collection of actual specimen of the plants and animals okay so here yeah, the taxonomical aids so which are used for the classification or identification or nomenclature or classification of the plants so the aids are here herbarium botanical garden museum national parks okay either botanical parks or zoological parks whatever it may be okay the first we go to that herbarium so it is in a storage house collected the plant specimen that are dried and pressed and preserved on sheets so listen it carefully the herbarium is nothing but an a collection of the plant okay that plant consists of a tree with leaf and also inflorescence so that inflorescence contain fruit is collected that is dried okay then it is pressed and preserved on sheets so that is called as herbarium sheet okay on the herbarium sheet the description is given in the box but nothing but the date and place of collection and english name local name botanical name family collector name and etc etc so it is in a quick referral system of the taxonomical study so if you want to do identifying any new plant so you have to collect the twig of that plant so that twig of the plant is compared with an herbarium sheet either you know that whether the collected plant is new or old okay so when you compare with the herbarium sheets so now coming to the botanical garden so here the specialized gardens that having collection of living specimens so in the botanical gardens so especially the plants are grow according to that classification arrangement classification arrangement okay so here the royal botanical garden is in a largest botanical garden in the world so which is uh, located at kew england the kew is in a place okay the kew is in a place of the england so it is mainly located in england okay so royal botanical garden england located in kew place okay so especially in india so there are two botanical gardens are there one is an indian botanical garden that located in aura and 
NBRI, National Botanical Research Institute that located in Lucknow. Okay, so these are all, so especially in the botanical garden, so the plants are grown for the identical purpose. Okay, so the plants are labeled with that scientific name, local name, family and etc. 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 in the botanical gardens also. Okay, so here the important two mass question, Whoa. what is the largest botanical garden in the world and name the two botanical garden that present in India. The largest botanical garden is Royal Botanical Garden and Indian Botanical Garden located in Aura and National Botanical Research Institute that located in Lucknow. Okay, Lucknow. These are the two botanical gardens that present in India. So these are also used for the taxonomical aids to identify the plants. So coming to the museums. So the museums are also have collections of preserved plants. So animals in the form of specimens. Okay, they are also used for the reference to identify the plants. Okay, so these are the set of educational institutions. So here the specimens are preserved in containers or in jaws in a preservative solution. Preservative solution. So a gloss jar is taken. So in this gloss, the, the preservative solution that is what it is in a 70% formaldehyde is taken. So in that 70% formaldehyde. So whatever the specimens we collected that was placed in that formaldehyde and it is preserved. Okay. So the plants and animals and dry specimens, insects and insect boxes after collecting, killing and cleaning and large animal stuff and preserved. Okay, skeletons of animals are also preserved in that. Uh, large containers so in the medical institutions medical colleges and etc etc for the referral study so that's why the museums are also used for the taxonomical aids taxonomical aids and zoological parks okay that we no need in our syllabus is not present that present in your zoology syllabus now coming to the last uh, important taxonomical aid that is in a key okay the key is an another another taxonomical aid used for the identification of the plants based on the similarities and dissimilarities. So here, based on the contrasting characters that are generally in pair, so which is called as couplet. Okay, so whatever the characters which are generally in pair, for example, tall, dwarf, tall, dwarf, it is in a character. What is the character? This is a length. Either the length is tall or dwarf. Okay, in Telugu we call it kodavu and poti. So these are length of the plant character is in a generally in pair. That is called as couplet okay so in this couplet only one is accepted statement that is called as lead so represents the choice between the two opposite options accepting one and rejecting another but nothing but each statement in a couplet is called as lead so if you see one plant okay first you want to identify the length of the plant either the length is tall or no so when you see it Automatically observe either the plant is tall in condition or dwarf in condition. So if the, if the plant is tall, you accept the tall and you reject the dwarf. Okay, so that's why here the E statement that is called as lead. And whatever the accepting statement that present in a couplet, so that is called as lead. Okay, so in the subprint taxonomical keys for the E taxonomic category like family, genus, species for the identification purpose that analysis in the nature okay just you see here couplet has in two statements each called lead separate keys for the taxonomical categories needed used to classify the organism so this you see the word here the flora so actual account and the habitat and distribution of the plants species in any area that is called as flora so for example telangana flora so which means so in the telangana there are many number of the plants are that are habituated habituated and distributed in a different corners of the Telangana. So that are nothing but it is in a Telangana flora. So what are the plants which are distributed in the Telangana area? That represents the flora of Telangana. Now coming to the next manual. Okay, have a description of the species in an area is used to getting information of identification of the identification of names. Okay. So the manual that represents the only description of the species in a particular area. That is nothing but it is called as an a manuals. Okay, here yeah, the manuals are providing information of for identification of names. Identification of name that species found in a area. Okay, so now coming to the monograph. So it mainly contain information about the only the one taxa. So used for the classification purpose only. 
used for classification purpose only okay so these are the first topic especially you studied about in this topic uh, regarding to that uh, two marks question and four marks question binomial nomenclature and taxonomical aids taxonomical aids so that is a herbarium and museums and botanical gardens and keys floras manuals monographs and catalogs and etc etc okay so this is a taxonomical key which is used to identify the unknown species so whatever so here the characters dry skin so here we take the skin character either the dry skin wet skin so we taking here so here the s no so in salamander the dry skin is not present so in the human being the dry skin is present so coming to the hair so in the lizard there is no hair on the surface of the body and here human being that contain the hair so the opposable thumbs are all present in the tiger present in the human being and bipedal activity that shown by the human being and not shown by the gorilla so that's why the dry skin hair opposable thumb bipedal keys so which represents the human being so because of which are separated from the other animals so similarly so the keys are used for the identification of the animals and as well as identification of the plants so thanking you